Oh, bro. Um, I'll second that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Can we go to the uh, permit updates, I guess, then? Okay. Yes. So we're starting with, what, 1711 Cotton Street? You're, you're muted. I'm going to go through a majority of these. Some Savannah has been more um, in play with, so uh, we're hoping, I'm hoping she'll be on soon. But I'll go over. Come on, Hayden, I'm here. Oh, oh, cool. Perfect. So, You're good. Yeah, great. so with 1711 Cotton Street, this has been something that's been on all of our radar for quite some time. I believe it was out there in 2020. Um, it, it is uh, two younger females with uh, several dogs. And we then got wind that they never got the permit recently. We went back out there, did a reinspection of their property. The animals are still in good health. And I, they advised me uh, they did get vaccinations for all their animals, but they were waiting to get a signature from the landlord. I do believe that that was all completed and submitted. Um, so what I saw, all the animals uh, were, were being properly taken care of. They caught up on their vaccinations, and I think it's a, uh, they're on top of things, and I have no concerns with that household. Okay. They did submit their application form that was sent to you separately from the packet. I didn't have it in time. Okay. All right. Um, then there's a cat rescue. Six eleven. So that that is. Can we go itself. back? Oh, Can we sorry. go back? Do you want to? You have to formally vote to oh, no. approve or deny the seventeen eleven cotton. And you feel comfortable, Randy? Uh, well, <laughs> that's my wife's name, but yes. Oh, Rand <laughs> I'm sorry, I know. Uh, yeah, it's, I know. Hayden. it's Hayden, but yes, yeah, yeah I, I feel comfortable with them. <laughs> um, excellent. <laughs> um, all right, so that's approved. And then, uh, uh, uh. nope. You need to oh, have a motion. Yeah, it has motion. to be okay. formal. Sorry. It's been a while. <laughs> That's okay. I know we only do this twice a year. All right. Motion to approve. I'll make that motion. <laughs> Anna, we can't hear you for some reason. So she did move. I can see her. Okay. But we can't hear her for some reason. So we need a second. Okay. Anyone want a second? I'll second, but I'll second it. Thank you. <laughs> okay, now 611 Maple. 611 Maple has uh, worked itself out. She has since been evicted from that property. Uh, ironically enough, somebody already filed a complaint against her, but she is no longer in the city of Reading. Uh, so there's no need to worry about Miss Sims and that address. Okay. Thankfully. Um, what, 1034 Court Street? I'm going to leave. I believe this is one of the... Yeah, this is one of mine. I believe this is Savannah. Yeah, so we had actually discussed this one last time in her application. She hadn't gotten in, but she has since had it put in. I'm pulling her up really quick. Um, so I have no issues with this property. Um, I, like I said, we did talk about this at the last meeting. She, all of the cats in her house are pretty elderly, all cared for, all up to date on vaccines. Um, the only issue she had with getting her application submitted was getting it there because she didn't drive. Um, but to my knowledge, it has been submitted and she did have all the vaccines for all of her animals. Um, everything was orderly when I was in the house. I don't have any concerns with the amount that she has and her ability to care for them. Um, so for me, I, I think that one's good. We have a motion to approve. I'll make a motion. I'll, I'll motion to approve. Got two then. Uh, 
and then oh, it's near me, uh, 936 North Fifth Street. So this one was also one of mine. Now, I, as of right now, unless you guys got something between yesterday and today, since I talked with the owner, I don't think an application was submitted for her yet. It was not. Nothing. Okay. No. So I've been um, in communication with her for the last, since probably April, when we first got the complaint about her property. I mean, again, this is one where she has a lot of cats, but everybody is separated on floor. So they're fixed or not fixed. She's working on getting everybody fixed. Um, I would not say that she is, I would say she's able to care for the number that she has. Her issue is getting them all vaccinated and being able to get her application in because they need to be vaccinated. So I spoke with her, what day is today? Thursday, we spoke on Tuesday. And she had, I'm just looking through my notes. I want to say she had six cats left that needed to be vaccinated. She was taking a few at a time over to um, right here on 724. And oh, wow. why can't I think of what her name is? Bet on me. Yes, Bet on me. Uh, thank you. She was taking them over to bed. I mean, every Saturday for the clinics, she got everybody done. And then she had like five or six left. She didn't get vaccinated yet. So like I said, I touched base with her on Tuesday. I said, listen, we have the meeting coming up. I, we've been working on this for a while. I'd like to get your application in. Um, her problem is having the finances to get the last ones done. So I had made friends in the past to her about, listen, you know, we might be able to assist you, but are you sure that you're going to be able to afford to care for all of these animals moving forward, not just getting the vaccines to get your permit approved, but next year when they're due or in three years when they're due, or if you have an upper respiratory outbreak, God forbid, whatever happens. Um, she has some tenants in her property that she rents out rooms to that she's having problems with, haven't paid rent. Those were her excuses. Um, she swears to me she will have everybody vaccinated by the first weekend in July. So that's where that one stands. I, um, I'm kind of stuck on her because like I said, all the animals were healthy, that I had no concerns with her property and how she was caring for them. Litter boxes were cleaned, animals were fine, you know, house was clean. But she's obviously has to get them all vaccinated to have her application approved. So that's what I have on that property right now. That's where, where she stands. So we kind of just have to wait on that one for right now and just, okay, all right. Now, okay. if like, let's say she gets the last few done, would we have to wait then until the next, can we just, I send it to you and we get it in and we regroup and then approve it at that point or deny it at that point? Yeah, we don't have to hold to ever, only twice a year. So if we have another bunch of applications, I'll Perfect. be in touch with everybody again. And we'll, I don't want them to have to wait six months. That's not. Yeah. So, not I mean, uh, like I said, I, I mean, I can, I will plan to follow up with her the first weekend of the, of the month, next month anyway. I can see where she's at. Um, and I can just kind of put a time frame on it that she just doesn't have it by a certain time. We need to make a decision on surrendering some. Uh, maybe the ones that she couldn't get vaccinated, we make a decision on surrendering those and keeping the ones that she has vaccinated or whatever we can do and then if she gets everyone done by that time I can send you guys an email and then we can regroup and go over everything at that point if that's okay okay perfect all right and then the last one 2416 high street yeah looking through this looks like one of my other animal control officers was doing an inspection it's a household with uh some ducks and chickens there are two individual housing units for uh, each species of animals. And uh, I, they were, she was advised on scene that she was waiting for codes to come and give a final gracing to permanently affix the chicken coop um, in their rear yard. Uh, the report seems to indicate that the coop, uh, both housing units were appropriately uh, made and structured and there wasn't any concern for the uh, welfare or the uh, health of the animals. Uh, we didn't get really any reasoning to, to why they own that. And I say that in which a lot of times chickens are um, 
raised for for uh, feed and food not that we discriminate against that or make any other decision but it just seems like there is a handful of chickens and three ducks on this property with proper housing so um based on that information and the statements from my officer i don't have any issue with that necessarily i don't know if there's any regulations over how coops can and need to be installed uh, um, on a code basis uh, so i'll leave that up to the discretion of of codes and such but from an animal perspective it seems to be fine where well, is high street what's that where is high street where, where is that Savannah. It's like the car tech. It's, it's one of the last blocks of the city, right in, I mean, 100 feet from the house, you're not in Reading anymore. Oh. Border. Off a river road. Okay. But the problem with the coop is it might actually be built on the right of way alley. It, okay. The, heard about it. I mean, the coop and everything fine. The chicken seemed fine. I was out. I'm the one that originally. Okay. Ordered. And uh, the problem is that the chicken coop might be behind the house, is a right of way like an alley, but there's no alley there. It's just on the parcels. And they built it halfway in. So that's the last I heard, though. That's like a zoning issue. So, which uh, the zoning administrator does have an application for the coop. Um, he didn't want to approve the coop if we did not approve the permit for the animals. Gotcha. So he was kind of waiting. So I'll report to him uh, when we're finished here that, you know, what your decision is whether or not that zoning permit moves forward. So, um, so with keeping chickens in like still in the city of Reading, I mean, is it, I mean, sorry, that's fine. Is it, um, oh, it, what, what is this? Can, can people keep chickens in the city of Reading regardless of how they're kept? I mean, is that something, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, so really anybody, let's say you own a chicken, you need to give that chicken suitable shelter, uh, which is a pretty, just like any animal can be theoretically an easy, uh, easy achievement. That said, when you do have chickens, there are certain things that chickens need that say a dog doesn't typically need. Um, it's fecal matter can be beneficial making a ground pack. It can also be a problem if it's not properly cleaned. So usually you put them in a coop to let it drop off. They do have uh, different internal temperatures, although feathered, they do like to stay warm and it can be a problem if they're getting too cold. So typically a coop does protect them from wandering, getting you know attacked by a dog running by a raccoon. And also if done properly, will help them stay sanitary uh, and warm as well. So it's not required, but uh, you know, if they converted their basement with heating lamps and did it down there, I'd say that theoretically be fine as well if done appropriately, but. Okay. So the issues usually come down to like if there's a rooster or something in the group that's causing noise issues and stuff like that. Yeah. That's, yes. that's okay. Okay. All right. Um, and, and aside from the right of way, which is some stuff, we just need to decide whether or not the chickens are okay to keep there. Is that? I'm up to speed with that. And we're just trying to decide if the chickens themselves, and then we can do the coop thing, or you can do the, the coop thing later on, right? Okay. Okay. So, does anyone want to approve the chickens? <laughs> I'll approve. Is there a second? What the hell? I'll prove it. Okay. Anna, Anna said she's having trouble with her microphone, so she just seconded in the chat. Oh, awesome. Okay. <laughs> Did you guys happen to get a second chicken related application for High Street as well? Okay. Yeah, 20, 23. 2329 High Street. Yeah, it's the same street. It's just another property with chickens as well. They are supposed to be putting an application in. I didn't know if they submitted it yet. If they have, they ha uh, Codes hasn't shared it with me yet. Okay. Well, I don't believe we got it yet. So. Okay. She was, um, that was the one where there, I think, were like 11 or 12 chickens and they were supposed to be moving to the daughter's property in a different state. 
uh, within the next week or two. And I had said, she, she said she may be keeping one or two of them. So I said, just put in for the application anyway, in case you do keep them. If not, then we'll just, you know, eliminate it. So I can follow up with her and see if she's still planning to keep any. If she is, we'll make sure she gets that in. As of today, they're all still there. Okay. All right. All right. So that's all the permits. And so old business, regulation of cats. So this came about when Hayden was talking at one of our last meetings about um, there being regulations around kennels, but not around um, housing or breeding cats. And so I don't know if there's been, I have not done any research on that and I don't know, I'm not an animal expert, if that would be something that we could do. You know, I, I think that the more I look into it, uh, th there's there's two things that come to mind. The first is, like throughout the state of Pennsylvania, there's no definition, so there's no um, inspection standard or quality for cats in, in in formal settings like shelters and rescues and things like that. Um, so it makes it really hard to to find a uh, ground kind of to build off of. The other issue too is I don't want to create necessarily a situation that would entrap individuals taking in say two cats in dire situations and placing them into some type of um, requirement to pay all these monies and fees or be held liable for a violation of an ordinance um, inadvertently. Uh, you know, so writing it in a certain way, obviously two cats can probably, it could be, you know, on a limit of animals that you have in there. Um, but I would, I would have no problem spilling my mind on some paper and sending it to you, Michelle, and just kind of seeing if we could build something. Cause I do want to make sure and prevent um, overabundance. Cause obviously you look at the Sims, it, we can keep it simple to a degree and say, Hey, uh, you got to apply for a permit. But then Miss Sims is a smart individual in this case in which she can move these cats at a volume in which she will always stay under the numbers when I appear and always exceed the numbers when I'm called. So, you know, finding a way to work with that to just ensure that not necessarily you can't do it, but that you at least need to register yourself and announce yourself to the city and our organization if you are going to take that on, so to speak. So, um, I'll send you something over the next month or so uh, as I, as I draft it up and we can kind of maybe next meeting, sit down, see what we think about it and build off of it. If, if no, everyone here wouldn't mind. Okay. All right. Um, and then there's a zoning ordinance amendment. Yeah. And a, Lomano and I met with the city zoning administrator and planner um, about this issue. Uh, and this comes from uh, the ARL questioning um, kind of the regulation. It kind of goes, it's kind of related to the cats, but it's for all of them so that we have a little bit tighter um, zoning regulations around animals that would be separate from the animal the keeping of animals, you know, the leashing, the the tethering, you know, that kind of stuff. A, a more about where they're allowed to be and and kind of how we can control some of these. Um, and that's related, I guess, to Maple Street too. Was it appropriate for her to have that operation going on in that neighborhood? So um, that situation kind of set off a few things for us with the city. So if Anna could please um, review that discussion. Uh, and honestly, Michelle, I haven't spoken with uh, the zoning um, office since we had that conversation. I believe um, Dave was going to put together some language, if I'm not mistaken, um, that would be consistent with uh, current zoning um, so that we don't have inconsistent regulations. Um, and I don't believe that he's gotten back to me on that. So I don't have anything specific. I can certainly follow up with him um, and address the 
I, I'm sure there's a way that we can address the issues um, that are being raised uh, without running afoul of any of our current zoning ordinances. And it, and it doesn't sound like they're at, I, my recollection was it, it wasn't real involved. It was really just a, a question of having some minimum standards. Yeah, and it was things like, you know, kennel was defined, but not consistently with the animal, the state animal kennel, the language. Um, it, it talked about harboring, but the way it's written in zoning right now, it's only humans. It doesn't, you know, apply to, to animals. So there's some little things like that that need to be tightened up. Um, and I believe Dave was also going to uh, put the animal chapter in there as a reference so that people who are looking in one place would know to look in the other so that there's, you know, the, the combination and the coordination in the, in the language. Right. He's going to, we're going to make sure the cross references are consistent so that it's, we're not sending mixed messages to the public, especially when they're trying to comply with the regulations. So I certainly can follow up with, with Dave between now and the next meeting and, and, it, and ideally put something together to circulate prior to the next meeting so that everyone has their eyes on it before we get together. And I think too, Anna, when we spoke, Dave was gonna kind of have this in his back pocket to do it with a combination when we did it with another amendment because there's very specific advertising and public meeting requirements around zoning changes. So rather than doing the whole process for these little um, amendments, he would make a package when he does another one so that we do the process all at the same time. Correct, that's, that's what I remember too. I guess if anybody has any input that might be helpful in that, I, we could maybe email that to, to Shelly so that she could share it with Dave and I. Um, I don't know, you know, it's like a, a card before the horse question. I don't know if we want to circulate what we're thinking to the group and, and ask for comments or vice versa. But, you know, if anyone has any thoughts as we're discussing this, I certainly feel free to share that. Um, and, and that could help the zoning office and myself as we work on this. Okay. okay. Um, are there any other matters as well? I do want to just bring up two things for you guys to note. Um, so on April 23rd, there was an incident on the 1300 uh, block of Church Street. Uh, three dogs got out of the property and attacked a smaller dog, effectively killing it. We did euthanize it the next day due to injuries. Um, I, I cited him for dogs at large and, and working with the dog warden on, pro on um, uh, having her charge for harboring dangerous dogs in the city. Um, and on that note as well, there was an older case uh, from 2020 uh, uh, from the 2000 block of Kutztown. Well, the residents at 2098, the incident happened a few blocks away. Two dogs run out. One of them runs across the street and attacks a, a puppy being walked by a juvenile and kills that puppy. Um, at that time, I helped. I worked with Reading Police Department to charge for um, harboring of a dangerous dog, but it looks like the paperwork from the magisterial court wasn't properly filed with the state. So I gave all the information to the dog warden who will be filing and overseeing and ensuring that dog gets regulated per state regulations for dangerous dog. Because uh, there are, unfortunately, I wasn't unable to substantiate them, but there were allegations those dogs were out at large again, um, but I couldn't get a witness. But um, I will continue to compile anything that is bona fide to the dog warden moving forward for dangerous dog um, and, and bring them up to these to your attention during these meetings as well. <clears throat> Um, our next meeting date. Do you want to just wait until we know what we need and I'll poll everyone like I would normally do? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's okay. 
Well, um, we have a motion to adjourn. Nobody? <laughs> Nobody wants to. Okay, Anna. <laughs> Thanks, Anna. <laughs> I'll second it. Thanks, Anna. All right, everyone. Well, it's good seeing your faces. All right. Take care. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye.